So you want to start an email list from scratch. This is how you do it. Anyone who's launched a Shopify store recently um, or any kind of e-commerce platform now understands the importance of email marketing and how completely integral it is to success with selling products. Email is everything, right? Retention is a big deal. You get those shopping cart abandonment emails. Like people don't understand that these things are all triggered by actions. Let's say I was shopping for Brooks running shoes and I looked at a certain pair of shoes and then I left Brooks. Brooks knows that I left and starts sending me emails. Hey, dude, you left your sneakers in the cart. Why don't you come on back and buy those sneakers? And then I don't go back. And then four hours later, I get another email and the next day. So what you can do on that journey is incentivize people to come back too. Brooks doesn't do it. However, a lot of companies will give you a 10% off if you come back like after three attempts to get you to come back and check out they're like hey we're probably going to lose you but here's 10 percent off just in case and many people bite on that so that originates from a service called clavio clavio has become the default for e-commerce for me shopify woocommerce integration i absolutely love clavio okay now the way to get new people into Clavio, outside of the customers that you already have and people who passively sign up on your website or if you incentivize them with downloads or however you do it from your website and directing traffic to a website, there's a thing called Facebook lead ads. Now, Google has lead ads too, but Google's rules are stricter and so I would default if you're starting from scratch, like you have a new Shopify store or a or a relatively new e-commerce um, situation, you're looking to amplify and grow your customer base, Clavio plus Facebook lead ads is exactly and precisely what I would do to get an email list populated with people who are directly aligned with what you're trying to sell and where you're trying to sell it. When you click on a Facebook lead ad, it pops open a form. That form is already populated with that person's email address, first name, last name. You can add anything else to this form, but by default, you can immediately capture someone's name and email address and then exchange it for something like an incentive. Okay, if you give us your email address, you take 30% off your, your first purchase at our web store or some other incentive, download an ebook, do something, do give them some reason that they're going to they're gonna click on this ad, have their information delivered to you. And then in exchange for that, you give them something. It's a, you know, it's an exchange of information and you get to keep them on your list. You're only advertising to people in a specific region or with specific interests. Um, so let's just say you're selling mulch in Milford, Connecticut, grilloservices.com, mulch by the truckload. And you want to get new customers so how do you go about that? Well, Facebook lead ads can be set up to target homeowners with lots of land and are interested in home improvement and they live within 15 miles or 20 miles of Milford, Connecticut. So Grillo Services will deliver further than that. But let's just say, you know, that people that are of, of that specific interest group lie within 20 miles of that origin point and their interests are home improvement and you know they often will buy products that align with grillo services organic mulch and topsoil and stones and all that stuff right so they run an ad and in some way incentivize people to click on the ad 20 percent off your first online order at grilloservices.com get ready you know this spring um have zero contact transactions and delivery right to your you know designated location on your property or your job site and you get 20 percent off your first purchase from our web store and boom they've they've clicked on the ad that you've taken their information now, by taken, that means that Clavio itself is directly integrated with these Facebook lead ads so that when someone hits submit, you give them um, a code to enter into the web store um, so when they check out, they can get their percent off. And then in exchange for that, you designate a list within Clavio that that person's email address and information gets stored so that you can continue to market to them in the future. Awesome. That's it. Now, Facebook lead ads need a little setup. Um, you know, obviously the interests and the location of your product and the people that you're trying to attract is very important because, you know, if you're 
advertising something that's relatively simple. Like a, that, to me, advertising mulch into the local area where people own houses and have landscaping and all that stuff, and you know they want to do it themselves and and work the land and all that good stuff, right? To me, that's kind of an easy sale. It's a no-brainer. This is simple. But if you have a more complex product or you have a more expensive service, um, you know, then you have to kind of change your offering. Like if you're uh, if you're offering a luxury service, okay, that's very expensive and upscale, and the quality justifies it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having an expensive upscale product. However, you meet with opposition. Um, in social media when your product exceeds a certain dollar amount or, or is advertised as a luxury item. People will come out of the woodwork just to comment on your ad to talk about how they hate your prices. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about budgets, right? Obviously, that's a huge important factor um, to the Facebook lead ad. From my experience, I've seen that costs per lead generally are between 75 cents and four dollars depending on the product depending on how broad the reach is and how refined and specific your interests are and the areas of the um, country that you go after for those specific things right if you factor in one to two dollars per lead well then you could expect let's just say you spent ten thousand dollars you're going to get somewhere between five thousand and ten thousand leads i mean it's it's really that simple if you've aligned your message properly and you've you've gone after the right individuals you're going to capture that many people into your list so what's your budget do you have a hundred thousand dollars to grow this list do you have ten thousand dollars to grow this list do you have fifty dollars to grow this list think about it like that generally you're going to get leads for between one and two dollars each maybe you get some for less maybe you know you take everybody from a certain region and you find that your your budget has gone from like one to two dollars per lead all of a sudden now cost per lead's gone up three four five dollars that means that area you, you've captured the area it's time to move on and when i say capture the area and time to move on if you're selling a luxury service to luxury people you're going to want to look after look up luxury neighborhoods and cities and interests of people who are doing luxury things in those luxury cities Greenwich, connecticut westport connecticut naples florida dallas texas dallas fort worth area san francisco get what i'm saying um, I don't know, you know, I don't want to call out specific areas who are, that are notoriously not wealthy, but if you're looking to, you know, go after a wealthy audience, then, you know, you would want to align your objectives with your exact audience. The same thing goes if you have a broad reach product or something very simple like a Hershey bar. Everybody likes Hershey bars. I don't care what you are, right? So that's really simple to sell something like that. So it really depends on your product and how broad the reach is for that product and how refined the reach is for that product. The more luxury, the more expensive, the more obscure, the more... Now, people generally like... I remember early on in the days of... Uh, in the early days of COVID, going to the grocery store, people don't like vegan cheese, okay? So this is a very difficult thing to sell. Vegan cheese, like... Ugh. Right? So if you're selling vegan cheese, it may be difficult to get that product broad reach. You have to be very refined with who you're trying to attract to that. You know, I'm a vegan. I don't like dairy. I am um, I like, I follow uh, PETA online. Um, you know, whatever the case, whatever the criteria is, there's, there's an interest group. There's criteria for anything that you're trying to sell, including vegan cheese or $200 men's pants that people only over the age of 50 would really appreciate. So whatever the case, if you need help getting these things set up, give me a yell, Michael Baker, Michael Baker digital, take it easy and good luck. 